Today is actually part two of what we did yesterday. Um, but we broke it down into two different sections because they're so different. We also want you to recognize what is a whole number, an integer, and a rational number before we continue with this. So today we're going to be able to, I'm going to teach you how to get a decimal translated to a fraction without using a calculator. Yes, sir. A decimal into a fraction without using a calculator. Did I hand those back already? Those notes? Looks like you still have to turn in your notes from chapter four, Hopwood. So decimal to fraction. 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 The number to the left of the decimal, so follow along as I read. The number to the left of a decimal becomes the whole, the big number, next to a mixed number. I think it might have been this class, but a couple of people, when you're writing a mixed number, which means it has a whole number and then a fraction, the number is a little bit too high or a little bit too low and you can't tell. Cole, can you please stop doing that? Too, too high or too low. So it looks like it's in the numerator. Okay, You have to have the numerator go halfway up the, the whole number. Okay, So this is what I'm talking about. You have... Some people would be writing like two and a half. They'd be writing it like this. That looks like 21 seconds, 21 halves, okay? So don't be doing that. Anyway, back to it. The numbers after the decimal gets put over the correct value, either 10, 100, 1,000, etc. The number of places after the decimal determines how many zeros you want to put in. If you want to get a drink, person who has hiccups, yeah, go get a drink. Um, determines how many zeros you put in and simplify. For example, for this first one, we have... 0 0.65, and the 5 is in the hundredths place, so it becomes 100. Now notice that it says hundredths place, and look what that is, 100. Okay? I'm working on something else right now. Is that the only thing of notes that you didn't turn in? Okay, so it looks like that was just missing. Um, hundredth is in, goes that, for that. Now listen to this. When I say this word... 65 hundredths. It's the same thing that I'm saying when I say 65 hundredths, which is off to the right side. You see that? If I were to say, write this number down, 65 hundredths, the question you could ask me is, well, sir, are you looking for a decimal or are you looking for a fraction? And I'm like, listen here, you smarty pants. Okay? Because it, it could go either way. It could go either way. Example two. 2.175. Since the 2 is the left of the decimal, that becomes a whole number and a mixed number. The 5 is in the thousandths place, so it becomes 2 and 175 thousandths. After simplifying, it's 7 fortieths. So once again, we have in the thousandths place, and there's a thousand. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how to reduce again as a review. See how we had to reduce 175 to, where am I going? There. I have to reduce 175 over 1,000 to 740 to see that. I want to remind you how to do that through upside down division or the ladder method. I have 175 and 1,000. I need to reduce this. I'll stick with red, why not? Okay, I'm going to take 5 out of there, and 175 times 35, then 5 divided by that is 200. Once again, I can take out another 5, so I have 7 and 40, and look, here's your numerator, here's your denominator, and it becomes 7 fortieths. Okay, that's a review from two weeks ago. That is to simplify a fraction. That's when you can do that. So I don't know why I would make you guys bring your book to use it for 20 seconds. So I typed this one up. It says, express each repeating decimal as a fraction. I want you to write that down. Because this is not in your notes, this part. Express and write it small. Write it small, please. Express each of these 
as a fraction. Try to write kind of small. Express each repeating decimal as a fraction or mixed number in simplest form. Ready? Now, this is the part where last period, everybody started to freak out. Okay? Just don't try to eat your cake before it's been cooked. I'm going to give you ingredients. I'm going to give you ingredients to the cake. I'm going to show you why this works. And the bottom line is this, you're just going to have to take my word for it because we're not going to learn to do this until next unit, okay? So I'm going to give you ingredients. We haven't even started preheating the oven, so don't eat it yet. Just write down what I write, and then it'll come clear, and you're going to have an oh moment after we're done working through these, okay? Yes, and then you can have a delicious, delicious cake. Even if some don't like cake or can't have cake. It's just little cakes. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So I'm going to let... So th what this is, is this is just meaning that it goes 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. This little bar on the top of that 5 means 5 goes on forever. So I'm going to define... Let the letter N... B zero point five 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 etc. Okay, so that that's the same number as I wrote in red. Then ten N then 10n, that's not ion, that's 10n. 10n, well, what would that number be? So 0 0.5555555, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. if I multiply that by 10, I'm neat. Close. Yeah, just 5555555. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. 5. 5. Okay? Now, if you had, so we, we are just using algebra to give that number of value. If you had 10 of anything and you took one of those things away, how many would you have? How many would you have left? Nine. You'd have nine left. So I'm going to take away one of those things and I have nine left. They're telling me to... Yeah. Sorry. So, now, see this equal sign here? See that equal sign? You don't have to, you don't have to put point arrow. Just, 
that equal sign means that it has to be equal on both sides, right? For example, if you and your sibling, if you have one, one of you receives 10 bucks, the other is going to be like, yo, where's my 10 bucks? Maybe not that mean. Like, yo, where's my 10 bucks? You don't speak to me like that. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Can I have 10 bucks too, please? Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know. But you would be equal by doing the same thing. You'd reduce one end from the other side too. And n, as it says right here, is equal to 0.5555555. Oh, just got ugly. So if I have $5.55 and I subtract 55 cents, what do I have left? $5. Okay, so I have 9n equals 5. 9n equals 5. Now this is this is proving stuff that we haven't done, but I'm just proving why we get to a conclusion later. Yes, sir. Yep. That dot 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 means it goes on forever. Are we trying to give five point five five as a generic value so that we get? Not a generic value. Just imagine that. Um, well, we're trying to prove a fraction here, and it's I have to show you stuff. This is more me showing stuff to understand why something is going to work in a little bit. What is going on back there? We good? Lots of distractions over here. We good? Now, here's another thing we're not going to learn for a couple more weeks. Right now, I have 9n equals 5. In order to get n by itself, I have to divide... It's called the inverse operation. Just take my word for it right now. So I come out with n equals 5 ninths. n equals 5 ninths. Okay? So that's the answer for that one. And keep in mind that we defined n as being equaling 0.5555555, but we were able to make it into a fraction. That's the goal of this lesson, to make it into a fraction. That's the bottom line that I want you to see out of this. And if you're just like, what is happening? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that because we will learn how to do that. But our main goal today is make decimals into fractions. And look what we did. We made a decimal into a fraction. Let's do another one that doesn't have to do with uh, just the ones digit repeating. So with this one, I'm going to let n... Can you close that door for me? Thank you. I'm going to let n equal 3.36366366. Good. Next, I'm going to be choosing to use 100 because it starts repeating at the 100th place. Okay, it starts repeating at the 100th place. Do you agree that it starts repeating at the 100th place? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to do 100 n is equal to, that pops over twice, 336, 36, 36, 36, 36, 36. Because whenever I multiply by a, a multiple of 10, all it does is just bounces the zero over as many, or the decimal over as many zeros as there are. Now I'm going to take away one n from both sides. I'm going to reduce one n, so it's minus an n. I'm going to have 99 n's over here, and over here I'm going to subtract 3.36366366366. And after that happens, it's just going to be 333 left. What do we think we're going to do next? Oh my goodness, you are correct. Yes, we're going to divide both sides by 99. So now I have n is equal to 333 over 99. But I have to reduce that. It can reduce by a lot, actually. It can reduce by a lot. I'm going to do... Let's 
see. I'm going to do 3. So it'll be reducing by 3. So now I have that. Now I'm going to make it into a mixed number. Right now it's called an improper fraction. You guys had that last year, actually, last week. So 55 weeks ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that would be 99 left over, or we have 99, and then it goes to 12, so we have 12 30 thirds, which simplifies to, for space, 3 and 4 elevenths, 3 and 4 elevenths. I just changed your perspective on what? Oh, all right. And look, I made an accidental uh, pair with three and a four elevenths on it. Does it? Three and four elevenths. Now, in your notes next, it says a bell. It says the denominator. What? Well, yeah. What did you notice about the denominators in each solution before reduction? What did you notice about them? What did you notice about them? They're, well, the denominators, you, you can't have a, a, an incomplete denominator. There's nines. Yes, there's nines. And I'm telling you, the denominator will be one. I'm going to make that black. One less than the place value of the decimal. Then simplify either 9, 99, 999, or et cetera, instead of 10, 100, 1,000, et cetera. Hello, table. So for example, example, we have one, or example one is 0 0.3 repeating. This here means repeating. means repeating. So whatever, wow, we are dropping everything. Three is in the tenth place, but since it's repeating, we need to do one less than, let's see if I can zoom to 120, 140. 140. Oops. Uh, Why are you doing this? Okay, fine. I'm not going to go to 140. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Since 3 is in the tenths place, was it this class that I talked about needing a rear view mirror? Hmm. No, I'm not dating a rear view mirror. For example, let's start this over. Since 3 is in the tenths place, I'm going to do 1 less than 10 because it's 9. So it becomes 3 over 9. I want you to circle those, those uh, words that I just circled, or those highlighted. If you have a highlighter, you can highlight it. But Then we have example 2. We have 0 0.19 repeating. The 9 is in the hundredths place, and the fraction repeats, so we use 1 less than 100, which is 99. So it becomes 19 over 99. And we can't simplify that anymore because 19 is prime. OK? Let's do some examples. This is the part where last period they got all giddy. And I'm not being like a lame teacher that is acting like it's fun to sit here. Yeah. No, not yet. After number three. So we have point 0.4. If I were to say that out loud, I would say four tenths. So I'm just going to write four, okay. four tenths. Hmm. 
Four tenths, but that's not simplified. I need to reduce it. Whoops, hello. Two fifths. Then I circle my answer. Next we have 0.23. Now, it goes to the, not the tenth place, but the hundredths place. So I need to go 23 over 100. I just heard someone say 99. That is only when stuff is repeating. Okay? Only when stuff is repeating. Thank you forever, whoever said that, because I'm glad that we were able to figure that out. And 23 is prime, so... All right. Now we have something that is repeating. Okay? I notice that it goes to the, not the tenth place, but the hundredths place. So what is going to be my denominator? It's going to be the hundredths, Gershi? 99. 99. It is 99. What's going to go in the numerator, Wyatt? I have an answer. Yeah, for example, you do not have to write this next thing. But for example, if it was 11, or, sorry, if we had, give me a two-digit number. 22. So if it was 22, well, that's, that repeats itself. That isn't, I'll do 41. Okay, so if this was being repeated, it would be 41 over 99. Okay. All right, so we have a negative in the decimal, so naturally the fraction is going to be negative. So we have what over 99? What's going to go in the numerator? 25. 25, you are correct. And are there any factors that 25 and 99 share? Yeah. 3? 25, nope, because 5 plus 7 is, or 5 plus 2 is 7. Tamaya? Because it repeats. It's not, it's not a full number. When we have 25 divided by 99, it's going to re... Oops. 25 divided by 99. Why does it do that twice? See, 25 divided goes over and over and over again. Because if we did it over 100, it would just be 0.25. So that doesn't reduce, so we are done, 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 done with that one. I'm going to go around this way because it's navigating that way. So... Let's not shout out answers, please. This one here is just another way of writing this. Okay? That's just another way of writing that. That's the same thing. It's just two different ways of seeing it. The same way that uh, it's good to know multiple ways of doing things. So I have a three repeating in the what place? What place, Emmy? It does go here all the way to the thousands, but look how I rewrote it. Tenths. Yep, tenths. And what's one less than ten? Nine. So we have three ninths, which is equal to one third, and there's our answer. Yes, see, that's exactly what someone said last period when we got to uh, number five. Yeah, this, that, that whole, like, uh, solving for a variable thing that we're going to do that was like, oh, what are you doing? And then you get to this, like, oh, yeah, this is easy. Yes? There's people like, that were walking out and they were like, this is the easiest homework you've given all year. And then some of them were like, I do not understand this. Yeah, it's, that's because they're trying to eat their um, cake before they even preheated the oven. Okay? So once again, we have 8 over 9 because 8 is repeating in the tenths place. Then we have negative 2.34. 2.34. It's negative, so right away I know that I can pull out my whole number. Okay? I can pull out my whole, no my whole number. W H O L E. Then I'm going to do 34 hmm, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Mr. Weber, what do you think? Hundredths, yes. 34 hundredths. I need to reduce that for sure. Okay? Ober, shober. 
Yes. Let me. No, because there's nothing repeating. It's not 99 because nothing's repeating. Only repeating gets nines. Only repeating gets nines, okay? So I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to divide it by 2, which would be 17 over 50. 17 is a prime number, so now I'm done, done. Two, negative 2 and 17. 50. Make sure you keep those negatives in there. Make sure you keep those negatives in there. Negatives earthquakes. Now we have 0 0.375. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you is talking about remembering what the place values are in decimals. What, what place value is that? Everybody say it. Ones. ones. And when you get away from the ones... When you get away from the ones, this is ones, this is tens, this is tenths. So it's the same thing with a tss, with like a little steam spray off, okay? Or a jazz uh, hi hat, tss, 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 okay? So I have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I need to go 375 over a thousand. 375 over 1,000. Ew, that is not simplified. It's kind of a big number. So let's do the simplifying party. I'm going to take 5 out of that one. And I don't know that one off the top of my head, so I'm going to have to do it like this. Or at least I know that I can't use calculators at home. You No. Know, I don't want you using calculators. No calculators. Especially with this stuff. Um, you, a lot of times what people do is if they check themselves, they won't change the work. They're just going to change the answer. So their work was wrong. So then we have 200. We can reduce again. So that's 50, 15. Okay, that one is 40. I can reduce again. So I know that I have 3 eighths, so it's just 3 eighths. So on our homework, are we just reducing? Yeah. No, you're making decimals into fractions and then reducing. This one here, you know, do those two, do those two. I'm going to give you literally a minute to do those two. Okay, for this one, you should have negative 13 and 3 tenths. This one, it's a 6. You have a 9 over it. That gets simplified to 2 thirds. And that's you should have. On the homework tonight, I only want you doing number 1 through 27, and that's what I'm going to pass out. And that's where the video ends, and have a great day.